凡人どもよ我が名を称えよお前たちの心にしかと刻みつけるのだ暗黒の中で神の宝石を待つだ消え失せろこれぞ神の力漆黒の闇そのクルスを増していく見るがいい苦しみを乗り越えたこの力を戦いに溺れようじゃないか天を遮り空を覆わハハ<笑>生存か破滅かそれはもちろん破滅を選ぶさ All right, welcome back, everyone. So uh, here we are、uh, during the Overlord month, and we're going to talk about another Dark buff that is coming in about five months the Kruger and Vincent patch. And today we're joined by a very special guest.、Uh, I don't think anybody has ever heard of him. I think you need to introduce yourself.、Uh, me? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. This is the first time I have been here. So、uh, I'm Dango. So I have my、uh, YouTube channel, sometimes making more PvP focused、uh, guides, some、uh, live coverage on the PvP battle,、uh, our community tournaments,、uh, something you can also find in the Wiki,、uh, Wiki Gracer webpage. And、uh, yeah, also sometimes I,、uh, you know, talk about the character views.、Uh, my video usually covers a little bit a f r o n t、um, like a height of the global server. So yeah, but yeah, it's very nice to join here to actually talk about something that is very far ahead now. It's like five months ahead、yeah. in the Chinese server. So thanks yeah, so, for having me here. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us, Dango. I know things have been pretty busy for you. So, thank you for taking one of your few、uh, vacation days and spending the time with us. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> so far, due to this、uh, crazy pandemic, yeah, the work is a little bit crazy now at the end of the year. But, yeah, have some time now. <laughs> Glad I can be here. Okay, well, thank you for, for coming on. Well, like I said just、uh, a minute ago, this is a big buff to, I guess, the Dark Faction. But just before we begin, I actually, it's my opinion that. This is probably the first banner in many months where you don't feel compelled to pull. Because I think the last couple months, the heroes they kept adding were just really crazy. I feel like these two new characters, they look very good, but they don't look as crazy as someone like Rosenseal or Hilda. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Like, I think this is the first one I am going to skip in a while. Yeah, I guess it kind of depends on what style you're trying to play for the next couple of seasons. But I, I do think, yeah, the power creep issue in the Chinese server is, is kind of like an ongoing thing.、Uh, all the banners, at least、uh, you get one character that is super strong. Sometimes both of them are super strong, like the、uh, Mario and Lolly Jessica banner, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot of、yeah. people are just、uh, going to hide for six star one of them. And then whatever star for the other one. So, yeah, there are a lot of crazy banners. So, this banner. I do believe this banner is kind of like a master pull banner. If you are playing the AoE strategy and if you still want to play the debuff strategy, which is actually still going to work and is going to work pretty well with this,、uh, I, it's hard for me to pronounce his name, Kuluja?、Uh, Kruger. 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 Kruger.、Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so he's actually a very, very strong Dark Faction unit and.、Uh, From what I have been hearing about him, and、uh, I watched、uh, some of the、uh, CN Apex Arena, it looks like this guy is actually more favored than a character like Basil.、Uh, I don't、mm -hmm. know if, if he is comparable with like Ruin, but yeah, he's really, really strong, really, really annoying. The 3C skill <laughs>、uh, basically covers the whole range and、uh, yes. yeah, applies a crazy amount of debuff. So you have still. Need to ban like r e s o u r c e a l first, but if you ban r e s o u r c e a l first, it's not like there is another very strong character that can counter that. So, this is what I said. I mean, we know、uh, KK or God K, right? He's a Chinese player, he's still in the global server playing auto run every season. So, yeah, he's still in the top、uh, eight match that is going to be happening in a bit. But yeah, this guy is a, is a player who enjoys like, the Dark Faction and the Mexico Faction a lot. And after this character is released,、uh, he, his short comment is that this is a return of the King of Debuff meta. 
So I he's know. very, very confident that uh, something Divac Meta is going to come back. So we are going to expect him to play a very similar style compared to Season 5 now with these two characters joining in. Okay. Yeah, I think you really summed up uh, what Kruger is all about. And you brought up a really good point about just banning Rosenseal. I think a lot of global players I've seen, they seem to have gotten this mistaken belief that AoEs and debuffs are like not viable because of Rosenseal, but you just ban Rosenseal and you just, uh, you yeah, just debuff anyway. Delete her. So the thing about uh, Kruger's debuff pool, it's the same as Bozel, it's the black hole debuff pool. So you have the, you know, it's the silence, passive block, uh, unbuffable and uh, fixed da- and uh, fixed damage poison. He is not like Reen. He doesn't have a uh, heal reverse or curse of wounding. Yeah, yeah. So he does he does have that. But I think the most interesting thing about his talent debuff is that he doesn't directly debuff. He actually converts a buff into a debuff. So yeah. So that means like you know right now like converting buffs or destroying buffs with you know any kind of dispel character is actually very popular. And Kruger kind of does both at the same time. He does he dispels your buff and then gives you a debuff. And just that by itself is very powerful. Yeah, uh, exactly. This is like the new trend. Uh, this is like the direction of power creeping, right? Before you only have the ability to debuff or you have the ability to dispel. Now you can basically dispel one and then dis- debuff one. That's how the convert works. It's like a combination effect. Yeah, and you also mentioned that his 3-cost skill covers the whole map, and when when they first announced the skill, I was kind of looking at it, because when they first announced the skill, they don't put the range on the announcement, so I was kind of looking yep. at it, I was not sure exactly how it would work, but then <laughs> everybody realized that it actually covers the entire map, and it was just like, oh my god, this is... This but, so, wait, this looks, sorry, what covers <laughs> the entire map? So it just looks very, very annoying. I think it's worth noting that the debuff pool in his the three cost infinite range debuff it actually has very weak debuffs it, it's actually a uh, attack minus 10 percent defense minus 10 percent magic defense minus 15 percent and uh damage the damage debuffs 10 percent it debuffs an enemy and then when they end their turn they will give three random debuffs to three a- three of their allies within three blocks so it just gives a lot of debuffs but the debuff pool is quite weak it does not give the black hole debuffs it doesn't give a uh, heal block or anything like that uh, which, th- thank God it doesn't, because if it did that, that would be so broken. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's, the function here really is to just overload your opponent and overwhelm them with just way too many debuffs for them to handle. And of yeah. course, like, and of course, like Kruger's talent is about uh, when the enemy has debuffs, he gets uh, more and more damage on his AOEs. Yeah, this is kind of how he works. I mean, this is kind of also like how the debuff meta works. Like you just want to apply a ton of debuff to your opponent. So even, I mean, they have like less OP debuff removal. Like if they don't have a resource sale, they cannot really deal with all the debuffs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and also like uh, the reason why like the debuff meta is going to work is because like really the only solution now is just uh, a resource sale. Like, some people think like juggler can counter debuff or AOE. Well, juggler doesn't really counter debuff. Uh, juggler counters AOE damage strategy. Yes. But uh, uh, yeah, as we can see from the global match, uh, there are a couple of times that juggler plus land use are both selected by the player, and uh, they are used to fighting against uh, debuff characters like. Uh, Ruin and Basel and get heavily punished. Like mm, yeah. uh, it's just because uh, Juggler is, isn't isn't there going to help you with the countering debuff. Yeah, so uh, you're like after Basel and Ruin, a lot of debuff um, like apply to you. Uh, sometimes you have this crazy heal reverse debuff. Sometimes you you don't have this crazy debuff, but still it was very very effective just because. Uh, the number of debuff are too much. Like if you have a uh, Sophia, if you have like one, uh, you know, other healers like Florentia, that's not going to help you remove all the debuff. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you, I think you bring up a really good point that Rosenseal is really the only healer that can just very hard counter the debuff meta. Really, I mean, even I can speak from experience that when I play with uh, so many healers, like I can, you know, I can have Liana plus uh, another healer and maybe even someone like Chris or something, you can still be overwhelmed by the debuffs because it's just 
the, the debuffs in this game are just they just outpace the healers mostly. And Rosen Seal, yeah. the only reason Rosen Seal works is because she's so she's so excessive in how powerful she is in preventing debuffs. Oh uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah, so yeah, even sometimes you think you have Liana and Richard, you think like you are not going to uh, get hurt by any of the debuff. Yeah, that's also not like very true in some case. Uh, you can still get like heavily debuffed, and uh, it's hard to deal with that. The solution to debuff meta is just the result seal. This is why if you still want to play uh, debuff meta, even in season six, you can still do so. But yeah, your first ban is always going to be the uh, result seal. Okay. Yeah. The other counter to debuff meta and AOE is the assassins, right? Usually, some of the debuff units. They are really easy to kill, they are really easy to snipe. For these two characters, we see some resistance to getting killed by yes. Assassin again. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was just about to bring that up. Like, uh, aside from Kruger's debuff skill, the most unique thing he is adding is his Dark Barrier skill. So this this Dark Barrier, it's, uh, it's an HP shield. Uh, this is a mechanic that's found in a lot of RPGs. I'm very surprised it actually took them this long to introduce this mechanic to to Langrisser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so essentially, it just it, it actually displays as an extra bar on top of the life bar, uh, which is you know it's just extra HP, essentially. So I mean, I don't I don't think I I have a lot to say. It's just like this is actually very very powerful when you think about it because. You know the barrier will protect you from being backstabbed. You know you'll still have 100% life after being backstabbed with the dark barrier off. You'll still, and you know Twilight Star cannot break your 100% life, and it's just it's just more HP, which is which will save you from being assassinated or just killed by anything really. Yeah. I, but but the thing is like when I'm looking at this barrier skill, the first thing my mind goes to is not about Kruger himself, but the, I'm thinking about like they're going to add a shield healer at some point. I know it's coming. It's going to come. Oh my, yeah. The shield, yeah, I mean, it's basically like introducing another mechanism. And sometimes, like, we have seen this a lot of times, actually, in a Wizard Mobile. Like, yeah. they introduce uh, the original effect that they turned certain tiles to XYZ from a high end, right? High end was the first character that can do that. Yeah, yeah. It was actually relatively weak compared to all the crazy uh, characters that's following high end's pass. Yeah. Like Licorice, like Odus. Yeah. So, yeah. It was a huge jump too, because like you, you, Heinz, three cost skill came out, I was just like, eh, it's, it's okay. And then, and it's just right after that, it's Licorice, and <laughs> Licorice was so crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. There, there is going to be a lot of shield, so Assassins is going to have a lot of like trouble until Probably, I don't know, maybe a year later, they will develop <laughs> some assassin that can steal all the shell before attacking. <laughs> uh, then... Hey, hey, that's that's, that's D-Heart. <laughs> so D-Heart can steal the shield. <laughs> <laughs> For the summon scenes, I I mean, I, I still think like you probably want to pull and copy. Like, who knows? Maybe, mm. yeah, like for me, I think like a debuff character that is assassin proof that has this decent range and also a scale of black hole. You know, I was so sad that Rini doesn't have black hole. If Rini <laughs> has black hole, that's pretty broken. Yeah, so, yeah, that's... I mean, people call it upgrade Wazo. I actually kind of agree with that, except mm. that this guy cannot call any faction back. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah that, that's the big difference, I think. Uh, I think his debuff ability is actually stronger than Bozo, and he has some utility skills, but yeah, the big thing is just no faction buff. Uh, so any thoughts, Frontier? <laughs> no, only thing I can say is that his um, the, the shield thing also allows him to move two spaces, which gives him, you know, bigger threat range. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk it's up it's to like, you, it's... have a shield, and then go, hey, AoE. So that's that's the thing I'm more scared about, because I'm the person who's going to forget, oh, he can walk two spaces, and then just get blasted. Uh, I guess one last thing I want to say is that I guess Kruger got a really fancy makeover for himself. Oh yes, yeah, we got the pretty boy version. <laughs> yeah, if you look at Kruger in like the Langris of Four Time Rift or something, you know, he just looks like some dude. And then like Kruger in his new outfit, he looks like uh, he's got the cape, he's got the coat, and uh, and he he looks he looks like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> it looks like a, a bad key. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yep. 
Uh, but anyway, I actually agree that if you are a debuff player, then yes, you you very much want Kruger. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pop him. So I guess next we get we could just go to Vincent now. The way I would sum up Vincent is that he looks very similar to Ares if he only had an AOE build, <laughs> like me. That's my simple uh, summary of him. What do you think, Dango? I actually think he's more comparable to Ashram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So the the reason that I think so is because he has super super strong survivability compared to Ares. So if you oh, yeah, if yeah. you jump in, and then he's going to get the immune to all the debuff, right? And then he's going to get one extra life. So I actually don't think he's as strong as the other character, but mm. we'll see. I think the survivability on him is pretty good, but uh, he didn't really fit too well with the debuff meta. Yeah, he's more for AOE damage strategy, I think. That's why I would compare him a little bit to Ares. The big weakness compared to Ares is that Ares has the has the suck in. He can he can teleport the enemies into around Ares, and that's the most yeah. powerful thing about Ares. Uh, Vincent cannot do that, but Vincent's AOEs are very very big, so he doesn't need to worry about that for himself mm -hmm. at least. Uh, as far as his survivability goes, I actually think that's kind of interesting because when I'm looking at his kit, the impression I get is that you actually want him to die. <laughs> I think he's very much centered around his 3 cost skill, has 4 range and it pulls him to the target. So he his attack range is a bit shorter than Ares but still pretty good, so you, have, you move 5 and then you have 4 range to pull him to the enemy and then he does an AoE. And then this AoE actually damages himself for 30% life. So oh. the way I was looking at it is that you almost want him to kill himself. What you do is that you, you pull himself to the enemy, he does his AoE, and then if he kills himself with the fixed damage, he'll just AoE again because it activates the talent AoE attack. And then yeah. your opponent, your opponent kind of has a dilemma because they're thinking, if they want to kill Vincent, their problem is like, if I kill Vincent, he's just gonna blow up again. And <laughs> just do another AoE. Yeah, he's just yeah, he's like he's like a bomb. <laughs> so like, it, it's it's a it's a dilemma of whether or not I should kill him. Yeah. That he doesn't have the ability to jump back, right? Right. This is the thing. The, the timing for Winston to jump in is very tricky. Like, mm. like, if you jump in and you didn't kill anyone, opponent can heal and then kill you and you deal like 30% damage. That, that wouldn't be too bad, but we will see. Yeah, I, for me, I think it's the timing for him to jump in is very hard. Mm. He is in faction with like Dark, but he isn't super fitting the other Dark faction characters. Maybe he's more fitting in Empire faction. Yeah. So if you have a strong Empire AOE team, if you have both Ares and Vincent and Leon, then that could be very, very threatening. Think about like first the Ares jump in and pull out the opponent and then Vincent jump in. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Empire has Leonhardt, of course. Uh, they have Maya. Yeah, so Empire AoE is definitely going to be something we can expect to see. I know a lot of Chinese players don't play Empire, but we do have some Empire players in global, so. Hmm. Uh, Empire also has uh, Helena. Uh, it's Helena, it's Helena is not <laughs> a Rosen Seal, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, Helena isn't used very often, but uh, Helena does have some minor AoE ability. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. I do agree that Vincent is, is probably going to be less popular than Kruger. Yeah. He looks very annoying to me because uh, it's true your opponent can heal up after he AoEs, but uh, to me, it's like that's not that's not any different from any other AOE character. Like you could say the same thing about Ares. Like because right now, yeah. sometimes some novice players when they use Ares, they think they could just jump into Ares, you know, just YOLO and kill somebody. And usually, that's not going to work if you're in gold rank and above. Uh, yeah. What you end up doing is that you just sort of wasted your Ares. He just he just jumped in and didn't win whisper and he didn't really do anything. Camping is definitely very critical in using Vincent. If you jump in at the red timing and you are like checking your opponent, you can heal, but then I have other characters to jump in, or you can kill, but then Vincent is going to do another damage. So if you are like checking your opponent, that making them do tough decisions later, then that would be a very nice jump. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, like Vincent. Otherwise, I feel like Vincent. He's actually even simpler than Kruger. He's just he's just got a lot of 
AoE attacks. He has some single target attacks, yeah. but I don't think you would ever use them on him. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, it's a simple character, very hard to use. Think about it, like if a lot of like newbie player using Vincent to jump in and random timing, that's like not going to get you anywhere. Just mm -hmm. like how they jump in Iris. Yeah. So you really need to think about like yeah, it's, the skill is easy to use. Uh, it's easy to understand, but the timing to jump in to maximize your benefit is kind of hard and tricky to to do. I guess uh, one final thing I'll bring up. You have Kruger in here too. Is that uh, Vincent's bonds are kind of. <laughs> kind of bad because it's like you have Elusia and Kruger. Well, of course, as usual, they want us to pull both the characters, so Vincent needs Kruger as well. But he needs Elusia, which I think a lot of people don't have. Uh, and Kruger is the same. Uh, Kruger, he needs he actually needs Shalinka for his defense bond, and I think most people don't have Shalinka. I did not have Shalinka. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually uh, kind of rough for some people, I think. Uh, that's been kind of a trend for a while now, is that the newer characters have some bonds that are of very off meta and rarely pulled for characters yeah this is the long trick to let you summon one <laughs> of yeah, course a shilinka actually has a banner going on right now on the chinese server so <laughs> i guess that's their way of get you to summon. yeah promoting more. the other yeah. banner right yeah so i mean yeah it's kind of expected uh, long racer is more than two years now like yeah it's, it's a decently old game, and the developers still need to get enough uh, so that they can keep the game going. So yeah. that's very understandable, I think, in my part. I personally am not a fan of the bond unlock system. I think yeah, I, I have, it's I have not, like a, it's not ideal. I understand why it's there. It's just that I even in terms of like gotcha games, I understand that gotcha games like monetize this way, but it's just. Oof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the best it, it, to lower spender players because they really want to concentrate their resource on a couple of characters that they really want to build. And then if you design a character that requires some garbage characters to honor the bond <laughs> for them, then that's really, really hard, right? I'm not saying Shrinka is garbage, but uh, she could be not used by a lot of players like with limited resource because as like lower spenders, you just don't have yeah. money to summon everything, right? Yeah. The only common uh, Sri Lanka user I can think of in global is uh, Hot. Yeah, and also Testarossa. Oh yeah, Testarossa, yes. She has her usage, she's just not there for all the lower spenders to also put their resource. Because the game punish you a lot. Building gears can be fun, but if you use the resource to enhance their PvP stats, to enhance their uh, Asian beginning stats, you will have trouble to build other characters that you just don't have enough resource to build all of them. Not to mention you have to farm their shards every day if you want to use them. So yeah, I don't like this that much as well, but I guess this is it is what it is. It's, it's kind of been like that for a long time in the Chinese server. At least the one good thing is that you don't have to suffer like 10 or 12 copy of one character before you summon something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This crazy story from SEA server. We, we had in global server, I, had, I remember someone summoned like 12 SRM before the first yeah. deterate. Yeah. Now we have 15 Maya before first Iris. So this is like breaking the report. Yeah, that's really disappointing to see this kind of thing happens, but at least in Chinese server now, you will not suffer from that. Going to after seven copyrights, you're going to guarantee to at least the extreme uh, treat. Um, yeah, for yeah, like yeah. one copy. Yeah, so yeah, they, nice. they, we actually talked about that with uh, Kong. Uh, it, it's the Hilda Warner banner introduces the uh, shard trade for yeah. six star heroes, and then Wataru, yeah. Wataru set the precedent that they're also going to do it for collabs, which is really nice. Yeah, it's, ni it's nice for the big whales, and sometimes the low budget players can also make use of it. You just have to save the, the yeah. crystal. Yeah, I remember this guy. I think he quit the game after that, but he saved all the resource to summon Yuria. And he summoned six star Omega before. Oh. Yeah, he didn't even get Yulia in the end. Oh, wow. And he's a he's a budget player. If you want to snipe when you net, you can actually save very long time in global server to get that. And it's really disappointing like for this kind of player, like they just uh, put all in and get six star of something that they don't want and didn't get the other. It's yeah. it's heartbroken. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's a mega rare yeah. when that happens. I had to spend like fifteen thousand yeah. Just to get one Albedo, and I got like three shell tears. That sucks, but like that's not even like. Oh yeah, no, but I, I could have been. The, <laughs> There's way been worse, worse you know? than that. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, hopefully, Zidane can also consider the bond option a little bit more friendly. You know, not asking us to use. Like we have to pull some crazy characters, like all the club units that don't require any others mm. to unlock bonds are actually very welcomed by the players. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's, that's one of the biggest yeah. advantages. Yeah, the of collab collabs. characters. I'm glad they have that. Well, anyway, uh, getting back to Vincent, uh, Frontier. <laughs> any thoughts on Vincent? No, he's cool. I do love his design, though. I I can say that. I I definitely like the uh, the cool wings. Oh yeah, yeah. So if if I pull on the spanner and I get him, I won't be upset. And he's voiced by Hikaru Midorikawa. That's that's <laughs> nice. That's uh. I don't that's know the, what he is. Well, he voices uh he voices Sigma in this game, and he voices uh Marth in the Fire Emblem games. Ah, okay. He's the Marth main. He voices Hero from Gundam Wing. Ah, okay. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah, yeah. he's voiced a lot of high profile roles. He's pretty well known for his buttery smooth voice. It's pretty nice that they can invite this kind of voice actor, so it suggests that the game is still making enough money. So that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's a good dedication. It's disappointing though; they just give up the English voicing at all, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's, they, it's they, sad. I mean, I understand that many people just didn't care for it, but I I think it was cool that it was there. Yeah, I have I have my iPad, which is my main, it has a Japanese, but my phone still has the English for the few characters. Yeah. That had. Yeah. Okay, we can talk about the three call skills now. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk about Virash. Virash's skill is uh, after he starts reviving, he is automatically considered to be standing in water, so he doesn't need to bring Tidal Surge anymore. But even if you do, you don't need to keep casting Tidal Surge. It won't waste the turns on his revive. It won't waste turns on his armor either, because his armor gives him random buffs when he dies. And then it has an active portion, which is basically just Aqua Blast. It makes him immune to fixed damage when he's attacking, so he can't lose lives from mirror armor. It just fixes some flaws that Virash had. It doesn't add anything like exciting or new for him, I think. Yeah, so I mean, it's a nice fix for him, but it's not a game-changing fix for him. Yeah. So it didn't really change his role or anything. Uh, it makes him a little bit better because usually any of those fixed damage just kills him when life. But I guess it's not a, a significant change, but it's a, it's a nice, decent change. Yeah, it's a nice change. I mean, I mean, if you don't have a way of really dealing with him, he can be very, very annoying. <laughs> he can be. And of course, Aqua Blast is a very strong move. Yeah. Yep. I have seen people use a uh, very nice build of Virash and uh, Odius and Vader in their defense team, and oh, that yeah. actually can be annoying. <laughs> yeah, he actually combines very well with Wheeler. A uh, Wheeler and, and Odius. Yeah, he doesn't need to use Tidal Surge anymore, so he can keep the Wheeler talent up longer as well. Yeah, it's, I think it's a, it's a nice fix for Verge, but it's just at the pace of current PvP, I didn't find him to be top level. It's just because other characters are just relatively better, but we will see. Maybe, yeah, we will see some Verge user maybe with yeah. that. I think Virash can be used, it's just he has very specific things you need to ban in order for him to uh, work yeah. properly. Yeah, I look forward to it and see what the what happens in a PvP wise and stuff. So next we have a uh, Knight of Mystery or Mystery Knight, Mystery Knight of Mystery. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they gave <laughs> her uh, Knight of <laughs> <laughs> they gave her uh, an AOE for her three costs, which I actually find very strange. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not bad or anything. It's just it's just very strange because I've always thought of Knight of Mystery as more of a single target character, but she she does AOE pretty well. Yeah, what's on there? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't think the, I don't think the Spirit is going to make a Night of Mystery back to the table. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's still a, a interesting character. I, I think for like AOE build Mystery Knight, like usually what would happen is that you had to bring Thunder Zone. Thunder Zone is very good, but uh, for the other one you have to bring is Forget, and Forget kind of sucks. The range is too small and like the passive disable usually isn't that useful. But uh, this is the three line AoE so it has a very big area so it, it's very nice for Night of Mystery I think because you know you, now you have two big AoE. Yeah we can we can also try the mage build now with, uh, with the Miracle Wand, Tenuous uh, oh, yeah. Headgear, Windars Rose and uh, Clock. Uh, no no need for Clock I mean. Uh, like maybe still breeds and yeah. Uh, yeah, just to go with full AOE and that whole mystery. <laughs> and, you <use> the, <laughs> and, and you use Goblin Knights with her, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as the this converts one buff to a debuff, 
from the testing, it appears that this is the Black Hole debuff list. So it is not like Broken Spear, because Broken Spear has a, like a shortened debuff list, so you, it, you have a higher chance of getting one of the really good ones. But uh, with this three cost, it's the Black Hole list, so it, you're kind of loaded up with the attack and defense and damage debuffs as well. So yeah, kind of a lower chance to get the really good debuffs, but it's still, it's okay. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have heal reverse like some people were hoping it, <laughs> it would have. Yeah, I, I don't think MK is... 3C makes her super strong or super or improved anything. Because, I mean, if you are using MK mostly for single target, then there is basically not much improvement at all. Uh, you may still bring Thunder Zone and, and single target skill mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Yeah, but I think for AoE use players, I know that Sunny Harry likes to use two AoE on MK already. Mm -hmm. So that's a very easy fix. You just uh, change the forget skill to the 3c skill so that's an easy fix so for this kind of play then that's definitely an improvement just a similar to varage i don't think this is going to change anything significantly there is a lot of competitive characters that you have to give up if you put mk in so yeah. still probably is pretty hard to see a usage like think about uh, mk versus himiko like you would definitely going to use Himiko as your AoE character instead of using Net of Mystery, like in a lot of cases. It's a decent 3C for her, but it's not going to change uh, significantly. In that comparison, what the advantage is like if you are a budget player and you cannot 6-star new characters very quickly, and if you already had Night of Mystery built, you can just slaughter in. And the other thing is that I, th I think it's nice when you have characters like this who have diverse builds you can do both single target and aoe so if you are playing like a mixed box or a hybrid box you can sort of sh this character is a pick no matter which strategy you decided to go with during pick ban yeah okay. i can agree with that i do like it because i'm so i'm trying to raise her to at least five star i do like the uh converts one random buff into a debuff remove the headgears effect is kind of a Probably the second best part you can remove. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get, get rid yeah, of those 10 yos. Headgear in this game is crazy, right? Yeah, it's yeah crazy. Just, just disable all those 10 yos and like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree though, like, it's not a huge game changer for Night of Mystery. Night of Mystery's biggest problem is really still her, her movement range. Mm -hmm. You know, like, she doesn't really have movement boosts of any kind, so she really just relies on Breeze. So, which is why I, I agree you would probably still stick to Breeze on her. People just have to wait for her exclusive. Uh, maybe we can see if she gets an exclusive that increases her movement range, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, that would really make her good. Yeah. If you can have a method with the special gear to give her mobility consistently, you know, compared to the 30% chance that you can get from Breeze, then that would, that would be a game changer. Yeah. Okay, uh, so finally we have Close with her 3 cost skill. Kind of long waited for some people because Close was the first uh, collab freebie. So Close's 3 cost skill just makes her an even better cleanser. That's always been Close's strength, uh, is that she's a, big, <laughs> she's a big cleansing character. Basically what this does is that it makes it so that her single target heal or any heal she does will also do a tiny heal in addition to that. So it kind of turns her normal heal into a weaker mass heal, essentially. <laughs> It also has an active portion, which is a dispel, three debuffs, and then heals. So a little bit like Aurora Ring, but the powerful thing about this heal is that it actually dispels before the heal. It's you are pretty strong. Yeah, so if you're heal blocked, you can use this uh, heal to dispel the heal block away and then heal immediately. Or and, heal rewards. Uh, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. that's the crazy part also. Yeah, I mean, one of the weaknesses of Aurora Ring is that even though Aurora Ring is very powerful, is like the cast itself does not heal. So if yeah. your HP was too low and you cast Aurora Ring, they can still follow up AoE and kill you. For me, the, the weaknesses of Close are the same as always, is that you can't clock a heal spell. <laughs> yeah, you cannot. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you use Chloe to counter the debuff meta, now you have two ways of really remove debuff and mm -hmm. one uh, actually can heal uh, after you remove. I mean, that would be a relatively better chance, but it's still not resource level. Mm -hmm. When you can actually prevent it from happening and as you said, this is still like two super long cooldown scale. 
uh, Arena Rain's four turn cooldown, the 3 C skill is five turn cooldown. So yeah, that's an improvement for her. Her specialty was to counter debuff team already. Yeah. So this is just making her to counter even better. Like as we mentioned before, the debuff teams kind of outpace the cleansing healers. But I do wonder how effective Close might be if you combine her with uh, Rachel or Deedlet, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's an interesting balance because they've always balanced the game so that for the most part you can't just sit there with your healers and then just like try to stall your opponent out. Yeah. You have to also be aggressive at the same time as you're cleansing away the debuffs. I am interested in seeing like if anybody is going to play more slow and healing based compositions. In my experience usually it's it's weaker than the debuff team. Yeah, so the crazy thing about debuff team is that what really stops them is that if you have characters that resource you to prevent the debuff from happening, so they, they cannot follow up, like we'll debuff you and then debuff you again and then another character debuff you again. Chloe is pretty good, like her suicide skill can not only remove all the debuff but also can heal a little bit. But if, if your opponent have other like follow ups to do debuff on you, your next chance to remove without other healer is to wait for next turn. But you, yeah, if you have that ritual, then that could be a very, very nice combo. Yeah. I think uh, if you have Chloe and Ritual together, probably going to be even more effective than having Liana and Ritual. Mm, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Liana have Sky Archer, so that's yeah. kind of also saving, solving the problem. Yeah, yeah, Liana. But yeah, we will see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, Liana's strength over Close is that Close is more of a burst cleansing, and Liana is like sustained cleansing. It's consistent. Yeah. Yeah, it's consistent. So, any thoughts, Frontier? No, um, I still don't, I've never raised her at all. Oh, okay. I mean, Close was a very popular character for people to use in Season 1 especially, so I think a lot of people still have her lying around. Yeah. And of course, she's, st- she's around in AI arena all the time. Yeah, always, always give you 3C scale. <laughs> they are, uh, I mean, are, the are, arena arena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you guys don't have anything else, I guess we can uh, talk about the new exclusive equipment. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for, we have uh, Tsubame and Gerald and Layla. So Tsubame gets a helm. So Tsubame right now is kind of unpopular. Uh, she was one of those characters, especially on Chinese servers, like people saw her and they were instantly just like, she's trash, I'm not going to use her. <laughs> uh, yeah. She's been very, very sad uh, sitting around in boxes. I think this helm will make her better. And I think we'll see her a little bit by people who just like the character, but I don't think she's going to be super popular or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a nice special gear for her, solves some of the problem. Yeah. But yeah, it's still not a a game-changing gear for her. Yeah, uh, the big thing here, I think, is the movement. So she can stack plus two movement uh, by using this helm. Uh, It's a unique buff, so it stacks with Breeze. So that was one Ooh. of the biggest problems with Tsubame, is that even though she could hide, it was pretty easy to uncover her because her striking range was a little bit too short. Yeah, with this, if you breeze and with the two movement from her helm, you know, you can have uh, seven movement, which is pretty good. It's still shorter than someone like Zerida or something, but that that's fine. because She just needs to stay outside AoE range and then be able to dive in and attack. Yeah, the mobility increase is pretty nice. It also has a damage dealt increase just for free. She, I don't think she really needed that, but it's just a nice bonus. Mm-hmm. It also has a AOE damage taken minus 10%, which I think is absolutely useless. <laughs> I actually... Like, yeah, the, the, the reduction in AOE damage is useless. The increase in damage deal is decent. Um, the mobility increase is really, really nice. Yeah. We will see. There could be some usage. I think this gear is actually pretty good. I, I agree. One of the relatively better special gears that you oh, can yeah, find. Yeah, yeah. It's have, not like a last pure level, but it's decent. Yeah. They tend to give like kind of crazy effects on the the non-meta characters, which is which makes sense. You know, I think that's that's a good way of, of yeah, going about it. Yeah, you have snowball. Sadly, that's not the case for the character that we are going to talk about in the next <laughs> Yes, unfortunately, uh, Gerald and Layla, who has kind of been the laughingstock of SSRs since the beginning of the game. I actually think it's pretty good, but yeah, it really doesn't fix their problems for PvP, definitely. It's basically a gift of eternal life, except it also gives a uh, normal attack range for the hero plus one. Mm-hmm. It lets Gerald in his uh, knight form. You can attack with the sorceresses at two range, 
which is kind of nice, which is something he kind of wanted to do before. If you use it with Layla, you use it with the Alchemist soldiers, so you can attack at 3 range. And and uh, it also helps their 3 cost skill, because their 3 cost skill was like uh, actually complete garbage. Because uh, after they patched it, you know, they patched it so that and when you use the 3 cost skill, what would happen is that like, he would turn into a melee class, and then there's no reason you would be using melee soldiers on Layla. But if you were using ranged soldiers, like now you can't attack with them, and it was just, it was just a mess. Like they they like I I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know just, either. Yeah, it was just it, just, <laughs> it was just like Weird. it just made no sense, and it could not be used at all. Uh, I'm kind of sad that Keeb stopped playing the game because I I would have asked him like uh, what he thought of this weapon. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're gonna see him in PvP very often. His talent is actually really strong. It's actually very similar to Rachel's talent, except it reaches the entire map. Yeah, I think uh, for cleansing and healing, like you still might see a Gerald and Layla here and there. It's interesting, but I think Gerald and Layla is still mostly restricted to PVE. He is mostly doing what is it? Uh, Jormungandr. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the top scores for Jormungandr actually use Gerald and Layla. Yeah, they will still shine there. I'm sure. Actually, I have another question for you guys. So. Okay. We know that Jodo and Leila is one of the characters that also still only have two factions. That's ah. actually also one of the limitations, right? If if they can be in a, a very strong faction, maybe we can see a little bit more usage. So hmm. if I ask you, you know, which faction do you think they can go to that will benefit them and also make sense? What faction would you guys say? Uh, definitely the dark faction. For me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, this like, is, like, this yeah. is what comes to my mind as well. Yeah. 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 I mean, as, as far as like lore-wise, like it, it's very strange that they were not in the dark faction, especially like for Gerald. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he even has this Dark Knight class, so it's kind of like, what's going on here, Zalone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Just to just to give them one more faction, and probably, you know, if like some people. It's crazy with like Dark Faction, use them in a lot of PvP, uh, a lot of Dark Faction characters in a box. Maybe uh, you can still use them as a, a semi-aggressive character that can also kill and remove um, debuff. That can be pretty decent, yeah. yeah. If you think about it, attacking at like, 3 range is still decent. Yeah, we will see if they can do some adjustment. I mean, to be honest, uh, being limited in strategy faction, like strategy faction isn't a popular faction to begin. <laughs> yeah. And with just a total two factions together, it's just a, uh, it's really limiting their capabilities. I would actually argue that the origin faction is actually quite weak as well. People make the mistake of thinking that the origin faction is really strong because juggler is in it, but it's like it's just juggler. Origin isn't overpowered. It's just juggler overpowered. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Like, if you take out juggler, it's not like you're going to find a faction buffer as well. And the other thing is, even people use juggler, they tend to not use the faction buffer. You know, yeah. there is like one game I see these people bring like four of the origin of light character, and juggler is not using faction buff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you just miss out on so much if you bring the faction buff on Juggler, so it's just... Yeah. I think the Origins faction really needs some help, and their hero list is actually pretty short. They have very few heroes, actually, when you go look at the, the heroes in the faction. Yeah, some of the club needs to keep the origin of light going a little bit. Like, you know, we have this Empire of club sometimes, like, all of the characters are in the Empire faction. Yeah. Some of these can really help a faction. Also, maybe just to get another faction buffer for them, like something like Resocial. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That can be really good. Just another item that I won't get. <laughs> I would like to raise Gerald and Layla for Ancient Beckoning, but like I, I have more important things to be sharding. <laughs> Yeah, this game just yeah. punish you a lot. Like you have to really think about uh, who you are building, cause like there is no way back. The other was his six star diehard. Yeah, it's it's funny cause like I've been playing my uh, protagonist faction for uh, since season two. You know, now it's, we're going into season six, and I was thinking like maybe I should try a different faction. And then I was like playing around with my box, and then I realized that. I've spent all my Gate of Fates on protagonist characters, and I have like I have nobody to build a box with. I'm kind of stuck playing that faction for a while, I think. But yeah, I mean, uh, if you guys don't have anything else to say, uh, I guess we can talk about the newest uh, SP hero, who is here by popular vote on the Chinese servers. Uh, we have SP Hein, 
And, it's actually uh, pretty good. Yeah, in my first impression of him. I, I mean, I hope that they can they can SP Egbert because Egbert got a crazy <laughs> suicide. You know. Okay. But it didn't happen. So it's as as uh, here we call is SP Hein. Um. Yeah. I guess I'll just give like a quick summary of how he works.、Mm -hmm. SP Hein. He still keeps his normal versions like stacking buff gimmick. He's still built around that. So he still has gain knowledge. Which increases his intelligence, but he does start the map with two stacks if he's at six stars, so that's kind of nice. They also add a completely new type of stack for him. He has thunder and fire stacks, and these stacks are used with his new skills. His new skills:、uh, first, you have magic mastery, a one cost skill. This powers up his three cost skill to deal plus fifty percent damage, which sounds very very powerful until you remember that his three cost skill only is point two times damage. So it's yeah, it's a lot of extra damage, but like his. His three cost skill was kind of weak to begin with, so this just sort of puts him back on par with other skills, really.、Uh, and then this、uh, magic mastery is also a cold blood style skill、uh, that gives him a magic shield.、Uh, I think the magic shield is kind of pointless, but you know, cold blood style skill is always nice. His biggest new feature is his new two cost skill,、uh, the secret magic tome. So this is a selection skill with th three skills in it, which is what they promised that he would be getting. Uh, essentially, it combines meteor,、uh, lightning strike, and、uh, a teleport into one skill. But to use this skill, you need to use his thunder and fire stacks that he gained. So even though this skill has no cooldown,、uh, well, it actually has a one-turn cooldown each time you use the skill. But it's also limited by the stacks he gains at the end of each turn. And the and the new soldier he gets is、uh, is sorceress. So、uh, that was one of the big complaints about Hein that he did not have sorceress. So now he has sorceress. <laughs> Yeah. So remember, Hein's troop attack is actually forty percent. Forty eight. Yeah, the soldier was actually hitting very, very strong. This is why people were complaining because it's completely wasted. Because Hein gets zero decent troop in his kit. So this expansion, so that he can now use Sorceress, is pretty nice. So Hein can deal some strong single target because you know he can also stack to. One of the highest、uh, intelligence unit in this game. Yeah. The thing that is missing is the damage increase. So, of course, you want Hyen to use like either breeze or magic enchantment, so that he can actually have damage increase. For me, the SP class is like direct upgrade, right? You didn't lose the、uh, old talent, and you just、uh, instead having some extra mechanism to to use the two cost scale. What do you think? Yeah, I think he's、uh, he's almost completely a direct upgrade. The only thing I would point out that is weaker is his heart bond.、Uh, his wizard heart bond was actually very powerful. It said that if he had seven buffs, he gets the damage dealt and damage taken.、Uh, his his new class, the heart bond, I believe it's something it's something like if he is attacked, he he does more damage, and it's like that's kind of useless for him. But、uh, yeah. otherwise, like yeah, it's like it's it's pretty much a straight upgrade. He still has his old talent. He has higher intelligence than the previous class. Yeah,、uh, he has more movement range now, and he has and he doesn't have the problem of like he doesn't have enough skill slots. He just brings he just brings the magic tome skill, and he has all kinds of spells in the same skill slot. Yeah, and and of course,、uh, as as usual, like always worth pointing out is that he's a teleport character, and、uh, teleport is just so powerful in this game. Or in any strategy game, really, yeah,、uh, I think he looks good.、Uh, not not amazing, you know. Hein is a very popular character from the Langrisser franchise, so I think、uh, you know people who wanted to use Hein will be happy. Yeah, I think for like players who enjoys to play the princess faction,、hmm. that's a very、uh, interesting addition to the princess faction. Right. <laughs> Although you have to bring her spe、uh, his special gear to be in the princess faction, but. That's、yeah. uh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, as you said, this is a pretty decent upgrade. I、uh, I don't think this is like game changingly good. I know some of the Chinese players are very excited to use him, but I don't think this is like still comparable to like other mages like Lolly Jessica who can teleport and act again,、oh, yeah, yeah. and also have a lot of increase in damage. But instead, Hain has a lot of choice with the AOE skill, so that could be a strong addition. Although the AOE doesn't bring a lot of debuff, so that's another limitations. So yeah, I do think Hain is is a more interesting character now. But、um, yeah, if you have enough love, then maybe you can make Hain pretty good. <laughs> 
I understand why he's not broken because at the end of the day he's still an SR character. With characters like this, the SB heroes for the SR characters is kind of is really nice for the budget players really because uh, you know yeah, almost yeah. almost all of us have the SR characters at six stars. Yeah. The, the reason, like, I, I always compare High End with this guy, Lolly Jessica, right? Mm -hmm. Because they are actually very, very similar. Both have the teleport, both have single target ability with very strong uh, troop modifier. But the thing that High End is missing compared to Lolly Jessica is uh, it's not like uh, he has lower stats. It's more like he has lower talent. Like, his talent is not as strong as Lolly Jessica. Mm -hmm. uh, his teleport. His teleport is good, but he cannot act again. So, it, like, yeah, like I, I do think Hyen is a very strong character here. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, if you compare him with some of the older uh, characters like Lana, right? Lana is the SSR character. Uh, SP Hyen definitely going to outperform Lana in that in that case, just because of his teleport skill. He's like, uh, he's also can use in Sorceress, uh the troop now. And also have the AOE ability. So, yeah, but you know, if you compare with the newer SSR like Lodi Jessica, then there is still a, a gap there. Hmm. And of course, right now, the factions that Hein is in are actually the meta factions. You know, Glory and Empire are both quite popular right now, I think. Or at least the, their faction buffers are quite popular. You know, you have Elwyn around and Rose and Silk and buff Empire, and you see a couple of Ladens around. So he, he it's it's pretty easy for Hein to get a faction buff nowadays, I think. Yeah, and also Princess if you have his hat. Yeah, and also the teleport is longer than Ares' teleport. It's the seven block teleport instead of five plots. Mm -hmm. All right, Frontier, any thoughts here? No. Um... Only thing I can say is if you have uh, Hein and you use him in the Princess, watch out for those three cost Knight of Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's, that is true, huh? Yep, might happen at one in a blue moon, but watch out. <laughs> it doesn't matter though, right? Because if you already received the Princess Faction Bath, then well, yeah, your yeah. helmet can be disabled, then that doesn't matter. But well, then if yeah. you use the Faction Bath again, you are not going to apply it. Yeah. yeah, that'll be interesting. Like it'll be, it'll be pretty funny. We'll be looking out for that. Send in your clips. <laughs> See if we, if we have a match with that in the future. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this new upcoming equipment banner that is actually coming to the mm -hmm. Chinese server. It's actually uh, as we're recording this, this is actually not out yet. So there are some like details to these pieces of equipment that we're not sure about yet. But uh, we'll, mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and we'll just go ahead and talk about it anyway. So mm -hmm. it's four new pieces of equipment. And the uh, interesting thing is that they announced that this, this equipment banner will actually have a sparking system. If you pull enough times, you will be able to choose one of the four pieces of equipment, which I think is a uh, oh. huge, huge improvement over oh. the previous equipment banner. Everyone starts looking at the one item. <laughs> my, my first uh, friend who quit the game was because he was summoning for Bracer and he got like 12 pull and no Bracer, so... Yeah, let me just post the image real quick and you can take a look. You can see right there is that not only does it say that, you know, if you after you pull a certain amount of times, you can choose one of the four items, but it also gives like all these extra rewards as you pull. Uh, you get you can get like uh, enchantment scrolls and like Trinity vouchers when you pull on this banner, which is kind of kind of interesting. So they're really trying to get people to pull this equipment because like I remember like I've only ever pulled on an equipment banner once and that was for Scarlet Reaper and I got I got boned so bad on that banner, I was just like, I am never pulling on an equipment banner again. This is just not worth it for a budget player. And now I'm looking at this banner, and I'm just kind of like, oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I should. <laughs> Maybe I should pull on this one. Yeah, when it comes. this is. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, as as we discussed, this is a. Uh... This is getting to be an old game, so in the yeah. later stage, the game is going to have a little bit more, uh, you know, benefit to the players. So yeah, this is a very nice change. And the thing about this equipment banner is that all four new pieces of equipment are actually really good, in my opinion. Although mm -hmm. some are obviously better than others. Uh, I'll uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the one that I think is actually the weakest. I'll start with the helm. So this helm is a mage helm. This helm basically says uh, before you are attacked, you will restore 10% life. So that, so right now, we are not sure how exactly this works yet, because if this happens after Twilight Star, then this helm is really, really good. Yeah, this yeah. is something I don't understand as well, because I don't know 
when when will it be applied, right? Yeah. It also has an artifact that you revive from fixed damage once during battle, which I think is like it might be useful now and again, like if you if you died from like Reen's fixed damage, or maybe you're like you die to a Listelle or something. But like I don't think it's like it's not going to happen very often. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question here is uh, whether or not this can save you from backstab or not backstab, but uh, Twilight Star. I think backstab will probably do too much damage for you to heal back with ten percent. Yeah. Although I have to mention one thing though, that the competing market is is pretty is pretty competitive, right? This yeah, is a helmet. The, yeah, yeah, it's a helmet. So that, that was that was that's the other thing. Yeah, you are competing against uh, Tenyo's headdress and uh, all kinds yeah. of other very powerful helms. So. Well, I, I mean, I guess the thing is, is like not everybody has like ten tenyos to uh, to be handing mm -hmm. out. So <laughs> if you get yeah. one of these and you don't have tenyos, it's still kind of an interesting option. Again, yeah. depending on how it actually works, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. So next, I guess uh, I'll talk about the sword. Uh, this sword is uh, so it gives ten percent attack, like most swords. It also says like when you are attacking one hundred percent life enemies, you will get an extra five percent attack, defense, and magic defense. I think this is a really good sword. It is pretty much uh, mm -hmm. a straight upgrade over Seal Guardian for yeah, you know, a is. lot of uh, a lot of characters. So you know, like uh, Rosalia, right. I think yeah. best weapon for Rosalia, best weapon for a lot of uh, DPS characters yeah. that want to one shot tanks. Or something. Leon would be happy. I, I mean, I know some people will look at it and think like 100% seems very restrictive, but the way to think of it is, is that it's free attack sometimes, and that's that's always nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still it's still plus a ten attack. You're only losing. It's not super rare if you are just going for the tank busting road. You are always going to face like a hundred percent tanks. Okay, next is the accessory. This gears accessory kind of pisses me off because. <laughs> okay, this is a very good accessory, but uh, it's basically Slayer's emblem except for cavalry. Yep. And this kind of annoys me because I don't think cavalry needed to be nerfed any more than they already have been. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like. <laughs> A lot of people are already using Lancer Landius because uh, Cavalry Landius is, just has so many problems right now. And here comes this thing. It's just even more uh, nerfs to the Cavalry class. And I just like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess like like even, even if you're not facing a Cavalry class Hilda or something, as long as they have Royal Cavalry in front of them, this is going to be very powerful. Yeah. But for me, the absolutely most broken piece of equipment they're adding here is this new body armor. So this new body armor, it's basically a halfway point between Bloodline Magic Armor and the Aeolus Armor. So instead of reducing one type of damage by 30%, 30% of the time, 30% of the time it reduces any damage, ranged or melee by 20%. I think this is just really, really good. I think this is like the best armor for almost every tank. Yeah, it's also another other layer of RNG in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Always, you, always fun. People will start to panic when these kind of thing triggers when they are trying to kill tanks. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it is ten percent less. So if you are, if it's like a attack blessed or maybe like an, an Imelda buffed tank buster unit, I think even if this activates, sometimes that's still not enough to save you. So if you're trying to like completely prevent something like that, then you still probably want Bloodline. But I think the the versatility offered by this armor is just kind of crazy. The only tank that I think would like have second thoughts about using this is probably someone like Freya. SP Freya uses both heavy and leather armor, so she can use Last Rites and this armor if she wanted to. I personally think I would take this even over Last Rites. So for me, I would still go with Last Ride on Freya. Okay. Uh, but my Freya will be using Bracer there. Yeah. If you don't have Bracer, then you definitely should use this armor instead of the Last Ride. Yeah. Yeah, any, any thoughts overall here, Dango, about this equipment banner? They introduced some new, like, nice effect. It's pretty nice that you can also kill cavalry units effectively now. So considering sometimes if you are using the tank buster team, uh, especially if you are facing against the Hilda, which is going to happen because you would tend to ban Albedo or Hilda, right? And if okay. you are facing Hilda, if uh, the Hilda can change to cavalry class, depends on what else you're like is in your team. So if you can have you know someone that can kill Lancer effectively to force them to use the cavalry class, and then you have this gear to start the cavalry Hilda. 
then that's definitely a very very nice thing to have so yeah i do think that the accessory can have very nice usage if you are going for the uh tank buster pin so that's pretty nice for the head gear yeah i, I guess we have to really really know the mechanism because it matters a lot yeah uh if yeah if it turns out that it heals after all the crazy fixed damage then that's pretty nice yeah, and for the other gears, um, yeah, the armor with I agree uh, with your opponent. Yeah, I think it's pretty nice selection for a lot of tanks. Yeah, it's just uh, also aiding a lot of like you know RNG. And uh, yeah, the weapon is a solid weapon. It's a direct uh, upgrade for a lot of like tank buster. You probably want to use that over the other weapon. So yeah, I think it's a nice banner to pull. And as you said. Now they are really trying to encourage players to pull these gear banners. So you get like these enchant packs, like uh, these vouchers, and uh, you know you can also select whatever you want. So that's a very good reason to pull for for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts here, Frontier? No, nope. same thing Dango said. <laughs> you think you're gonna pull for this one when it comes along? I will have to see what the, the some requirement is to choose the item, but I will definitely yeah. consider it. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely. Yeah, it's still not out yet, so I'm not entirely sure on the details. If it's out by the time I get this video out, I'll like put I'll put it in the video. Yeah, I guess it really depends on uh, what's how many summons you need to do the exchange. Like, yeah, if there's like a, a thousand summons to get <laughs> one guaranteed, then <laughs> no one is going to keep that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, we can finish this off by talking about this. Uh, all the new content they added, and the, the biggest thing I think is the new Guild Wars mode. Uh, so, Dango, I know, like, I know you've been mostly asking Q to help you with the new Guild Wars mode. Uh, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna go super deep into it because I think this is something that is worthy of its own video. I'm going to make a completely separate video talking about this mode and like uh, trying to explain some of the details of it. Uh, I'll just give like a short summary of what it is. And I'll give like some thoughts like uh, from me playing it a little bit so far. I, I don't know if you played it at all, Dango yet. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I get teamed a, a lot of time by the by the guild leader, so I know it's a pretty hard mode. Yeah. Uh, the guild I was in a, in a Chinese server, they have like over ten players in the playoff, so it's a pretty competitive guild. So even for them, it's not that easy. Dang. Or, or I'll go more into depth when I make a separate video talking about this mode because this is definitely a mode that is worthy of its own video. I'll summarize some of the basics here. So in this mode, you are trying to conquer a map with several like regions. And it's it's kind of similar to the Guild Wars we already have. So, but it's you have more regions and each region has like a battlefield that is similar to kind of like a timeless trial. Uh, the guild is split into four teams and each team will have a team leader. And uh, the team leader isn't just for show, they actually have a lot of responsibilities. And each of the teams will be placed on one corner of the map and everybody will fight towards the center of the map. The in-game like uh, lore or whatever is that you're, you're seizing a country sort of, and you're trying to attack into the middle of the map, which is where the capital is. Uh, all four teams will be sieging from a, a different point of the map and you'll be, you have to siege uh, all the outer regions first and then there will be an inner ring and then finally the capital. So for each, each region, will have several battlefields and each battlefield will have like it's kind of like a timeless trial it will usually have some kind of like law to it like you know oh like uh aoe damage is increased that sort of thing there are generally speaking three types of maps and they all involve fighting waves of enemies you're basically trying to kill as many enemies as possible to get higher scores and this is why people are saying that it needs like very high level and strong players to do because you need to be able to kill lots and lots of enemies very quickly to get the high scores and conquer these regions quickly. It's also like a very high level challenge. It's like the enemies are like level 75 to level 80 or so. They're much stronger than the Guild Wars opponents you have right now. They're more akin to the like the final Timeless Trials level sort of enemies. Like they have very okay. high stats. Yeah, uh, yeah. So this is what I have seen yeah, so far and, as well. And the other thing is that, okay, so in this mode, you are not allowed to take in as many characters as you want, just like Guild Wars. At the beginning, each player gets to create a box, sort of, similar to an Apex box. You select 15 of your units to place in your box for this mode. And uh, once you deploy them, 
they are locked in and you can't switch them back out. So so basically you are locked into using 15 units. These okay. 15 units actually have like a stamina bar. The stamina bar gets depleted each time you deploy them. And this stamina does not restore each day like it does in Guild Wars, uh, the normal Guild Wars. But you have to use an item to restore their stamina to deploy them more. So this is another reason why people are saying you need high level players and you need very efficient play in this mode because you essentially have a limited number of tries to beat this mode. This is actually a very rough mode for uh, casual players. This is something I I'm a little bit concerned about when it comes over to global server because you know, this this is already kind of rough for the Chinese players and the Chinese players have like a very high you know player base and a higher engagement than we do. Yeah, it's it's challenging for the top guild in the Chinese server. I don't know how how global is going to handle it because this is like their big new mode. They're really pushing this mode as their big new PVE mode. My own personal take on like the how fun it is so far. Like I I find it like I actually find it kind of dull because it's just it kind of feels just feels like more timeless trial maps. If you enjoy playing with your guildies and like planning stuff out with your guildies, I think this is going to be a really fun mode for you because like you you really need to actually like you actually need to communicate with your guild and talk about yeah, how my, you're going to approach it. The Chinese them. guild uh, uh I, I know most of them are using the Chinese version of Discord so they can talk. Uh they can talk when they are playing. So yeah, yeah, this is a very intensive mode. This is not something you can just auto like you can with Guild Wars right now. You actually have to play it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to. You have to play, you have to make coordinations, maybe also discussions. So yeah, it's pretty pretty hard mode. I guess when the mode drops, there are a couple of like guilds that is going to disband in a global server to form a little bit stronger ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that they can get more reward cause because you need you need that to get the uh high end SP stone, right? Yeah, yeah. The, you have to you have to fight it. Yeah, yeah. So 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 in regards to the rewards, since you brought it up, uh, the rewards are actually very nice. Uh, as you mentioned, there's the SP hero shards. The SP hero shards are only the SR ones, so Hein and Freya's are in the store. Ah. So which is nice because like Freya has not been rerun on the Chinese server as at all since the anniversary a couple months ago. So I guess this is going forward, this is going to be their way of introducing the SR SP shards, uh, which is good, I think, because this is accessible to everyone. Well, ostensibly. The other rewards are also very nice. You have surge stones, challenge points, uh, you got SSR equipment, you got burgers, vouchers, you know, just a lot of very varied rewards, I think. I think, like you said, uh, this is going to be very rough on like casual players and people in smaller guilds on the global server, so I don't know yeah, I'm I'm a little bit concerned about this, like, cause like even for myself, you know, even even if you're in a big guild, if you don't have time to play, like, really play this mode, it's gonna be kind of rough for you. Yeah, the main issue is that uh, coordination is hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. People are divided into four groups, I think. Yeah. And you need to talk to the players in each group. So for casual players, they're not going to join that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hard and rough. So I mean, a, a casual player can still join, they, you know, you can still go into the maps alone, but you're going to get way fewer points for yourself over time. And yeah. I, I mean, I think that's, I mean, I guess you can say that's fair because like they're not playing. Yeah. Playing so what happens well. is those competitive guilds starts to kick off those casual players that happen in the training server. Yeah. I think we have yeah. replaced like seven or eight players since the mode started. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm in a guild who, which is pretty, like, I would certainly not call it a casual guild on global server, but, like, we never kick people for being, like, we never kick people for not being hardcore enough. We kick people only... We, we, never, we never kick yeah. kick people for being that as well. Yeah, we, we only kick people for being inactive. But, yeah, it's like, I, this is what I'm concerned about. Even, even, like, the most, like, top guilds in global, I think, are going to struggle with this mode, and that's... I don't know if that's like a good direction for for global server at least like I mean for Chinese server even for Chinese server I think like this is kind of rough on on a lot of them so uh, yeah it'll be it, it is right yeah so it'll be interesting to see what happens because they are because they did say like uh, they they're going to gather feedback they're they're going to have a questionnaire in the Chinese server after this mode runs uh, yeah to, to get feedback. I am assuming a lot of Chinese players are going to feed back with like this is this mode is probably a little bit too hardcore. Like it's fine to have. Yeah, like, I some... mean it's interesting if you are actually li like to play this game with your friend. Yeah. As you said, it's interesting, it's engaging, um, but it's hard to finish all of them, I guess. 
it, it's it's a hard balance to make because like you don't want more modes where people just auto you know like i understand yeah. that like to to get a a mode where it's like you want to engage the players but you don't want to be too hardcore otherwise like you're just gonna make players kind of you gotta burn them out really yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I'm in, in another game. I'm in the, the 11th place guild in the entire game. I know how hard it is to get cooperative people to at certain times and whatnot together. Yeah, so. that's the thing. Like, if I wanted to play like raiding in an MMO or something, I'd probably go play M an MMO and raid yeah. an MMO. <laughs> Part of what works for phone games is that they they are you know they're more casual. You can play them. Yeah. Pick them up so yeah, them. in this case, like the Wizard Mobile is kind of like in between. Of yeah. a MMO and a, a traditional mobile game, like because yeah. it's it's definitely a lot more hardcore. Like PvP was already super super hardcore, yeah. even even more hardcore than some of the MMOs. But now they are trying to bring the PvE level to a similar hardcore level as well. So which is not really fitting a lot of mobile players. But we will see if they are going to make changes later. Yeah, uh, Frontier, you got anything you want to say or ask about no. this mode? I, I have experience with the coordination, so I'll I'll see what my guild does. I might have to coordinate everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you have five months to encourage them to coordinate. Yeah, I mean we yeah. have we have five months to prep for this mode, and I like I said, I am going to make a video talking about this mode, and I'll try to like explain a little bit deeper uh, on how it works. Uh, very helpful and interesting. And uh, you know the four the four team leaders, you know, in this mode, they actually have quite a few responsibilities. Like they have to handle like some of the buffs that the team gets. They have to like coordinate who goes where and that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, like, you have to find some very nice West uh, West Guild leaders to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this mode is pretty crazy. But uh, all of you out there, you got five months to prep for this. Uh, Global usually doesn't edit modes before they bring them over, so I'm expecting like this, like the hardcoreness to be intact when it first comes over. But hopefully, in yeah, the future, yeah. Even they, even if they they nerf the mode a little bit, I think we're still going to get the hardest one. Yeah, at the beginning. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's that's what happens. Uh, just prepare yourself. <laughs> okay. I guess the only the final thing we can talk about is this Christmas event that's going on in the Chinese server. Uh, there's I very little to say here it's just a points event uh you know it gives uh alfred shards and aniki boxes uh, mm -hmm. so which is which is always nice but uh that's that's all i gotta say it's a it's a christmas event i i think uh what i'm wondering is like uh right now the overlord event is running is like it's december so are they gonna do a christmas event for us as well it might be just a winter thing that they'll smack in like february <laughs> we get it in january or something yeah. No, July. Uh, I, I would more think we will have a summer winter event. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Christmas in July. Christmas in July. I mean, that's Christmas in Australia, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Country songs. Hey, in America, like, if you go by, like, how long people leave their ornaments up, Christmas goes on for, like, three months here, okay? I went to my local Walmart in, like, <laughs> September, and there is Christmas stuff. Yeah. America is just Christmas. That's all we are. It's gobbled up like Halloween. Like, there's yeah. no Halloween anymore, it's just Christmas. Uh, yeah, I think that's all we got for this patch. Uh, so, Dango, do you think you'll be playing a debuff uh, team in Season 7, I guess? Likely, likely. Because yeah. I, I learned the most of the Apex Arena from KK, so... Ah, uh, I already tested him well, so... <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so, how about you, Frontier? Any interest in this, in this patch? Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll look forward to it. I said before I'm a protagonist player, <laughs> and I think I'm stuck with that for a while. I probably will not pull for these characters, although uh, I might pull on this equipment banner, though. This, this equipment banner looks kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, I think that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us, Dango. Thank you for spending one of your few vacation days with us. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. You gave us a lot of very valuable information because, I mean, you're pretty well known as a high-level player in the global server for PvP, and I think a lot of people value what you have to say about all this. <laughs> yeah, your guys are pretty decent as well. Yeah, we're just uh, working <laughs> working to get better players in there. Yeah, and uh, as a final note, is like this new Guild Wars mode. I think if there's one takeaway from this video, this Guild Wars mode is kind of crazy, and if you don't play PvP and you, and you are PvE, main this is going to be the big content coming up for you so you i do think you should prepare for it yeah it's a chance to get your 15 characters ready 
people prepared for Ancient Beckoning as well when they knew that it was coming. So just like that, I think this is a mode that you need to prepare for. This mode does have like faction restrictions as well. So like I'll, I'll go more into it when I make a separate video, but yeah. Yeah, I'll be very looking forward to this mode as well. Uh, we will probably making some adjustments on the guild member to get it ready as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see, yeah. All right. How about your Frontier? Any final thoughts here? No, I'll just look forward to it in five months. <laughs> yeah, it, it is five months away, so don't panic or anything. You know, we're okay. You still got enough time compared to the CNs or... <laughs> all right, uh, that's all we got today. Thank you so much for joining us again, Dango. And all Thank you, you very know. much for having me. Yeah, it's a very uh, pleasure time to uh, talk with you guys. All right, I'll see all of you around. Yeah, Bye. see you. You want to say goodbye, Frontier? Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs>